Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going- hold on, let me adjust this so it does look like I'm wearing clothing. There we go. We are going to go into chapter 7 of One of Us is Next by Karen McManus. Uh, this will be part 1 of chapter 7 because chapter 7 is just is about as long if not longer than chapter 4. So we'll try and do it in two parts. If we have to do it in three, then it'll be in three, but hopefully just two. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 7, Maeve, Thursday, February 27th. I can't stop grinning at Berlin. It's so weird that you're here. I was here less than two months ago, she reminds me. You look different, I say, even though she doesn't. I mean, the side braid is a cute style I haven't seen before, but other than that, she hasn't changed a bit. She's even wearing her favorite ac ancient cashmere, cashmere sweater, so old that she has to roll up the sleeves to hide how frayed the cuffs are. It's the rest of the world that seems brighter when she's around, I guess. Even the chalk scrawled specials on the cap on Cafe Contigo's blackboard wall look extra vibrant. You need to come home for grad school, okay? The distance thing isn't working for me. Me either, bro in size. Turns out I'm a California girl at heart. Who knew? She dunks a spoon into her latte to redistribute the foam in a thin layer, but you might not even be here if you go to school in Hawaii. Broin, come on. We both know I'm going to I'm not going to the University of Hawaii. I say chasing my last bite of Al Forzor with a sip of water. My voice is light, casual, the kind of tone that says I won't go there because I'm not an island person and not I won't go there because I had another nosebleed this morning. It was minor though, stopped within a few minutes. I don't have any joint pain, fever, or weird bruises, so it's fine. Everything's fine. Rowan puts down her spoon and folds her hands, giving me one of her serious looks. If you could be anywhere in five years doing anything at all, what would you pick? Nope, we are absolutely not discussing this. If I start talking five years in the future with my sister, all my careful compartmentalizing will vanish and I will crack open like an egg, boiling her visit, her semester, and a million other things. You can't analyze my future right now, I say, grabbing another cookie. It's bad luck. What, Rowan Creep? Creases, why? I point to the clock on the wall, which has been reading 10 o'clock since the batteries died a week ago, because that's broken. Time is literally standing still. Oh my god, Maeve, Broen rolls her eyes. That's not even an actual superstition. That's just something you and Ida made up. She says hi, by the way. Now that Broen lives in Connecticut, she gets to see our grandparents regularly. Our grandfather, Ido, is still visiting lecture... is still a visiting lecturer at Yale. Also, that you're perfect and her favorite. She did not say that. It was implied. It's always implied. Sunday dinners with Ido and Ida are basically Maeve appreciation night. Rowan spit, sits her, sips her coffee suddenly looking pensive. So if today is already bad luck, does that mean we can talk about me and Nate? Maybe being broken up for good this time? Rowan, what is it with you guys? I shake my head as her mouth drops. Why can't you figure this out? Your entire relationship started from talking on the phone for crying out loud. Just do that just do that for like three months at a time and you'll be fine. I don't know, she says unhappily. She takes off her glasses and rubs her eyes. I brought her here straight from the airport and she's obviously a little jet lagged after her cross country flight. She's missing some classes to be here, which dad isn't wild about, but mom can't resist bringing Broen home for an extra day when she visits. We're just never in sync anymore, she says. When I'm feeling good about things, he's feeling like he's holding me back. She puts up finger quotes with Grimace. When he starts talking about what we should do over spring break, I wonder if I made a mistake not signing up for for that volunteer trip I was interested in. Then I think about him living in that house with all those roommates and girls in and out of all, all the time, and I get so jealous that it makes me irrational, which is not like me. No, it's not, I agree. Plus, you live alone in a dorm, so same thing. I know, she sighs. It's just so much harder than I thought it would be. Everything I do or say feels wrong with him. I don't bother asking if she still loves Nate. I know she does. You're overthinking it, I tell her, and she snorts out a laugh. Oh, you think? That'd be a first. Her phone vibrates on the table and she makes a face at it. Is it four already? Evan's outside. What? Evan Neiman? My voice ticks up on the last name. What's he doing here? Giving me a ride to Yukimos, Rowan says, draining the last of her latte. She's having a bunch of people for from our mathlete team over to watch some Thing Avengers related. Don't ask me what. You know, I don't care. She stuffs her phone in her bag and peers into the depths. Uh, I did I forget my prescription sunglasses? I'm so bad at keeping track of those. I hardly ever need them in, Con in Connecticut. 
Why is Evan taking you? Isn't he, uh, at Caltech? Rowan is still rooting around in her bag. Yeah, but he and Yukimo hang out sometimes. And he was at Yale last month for a debate club smackdown. So, aha, here they are. I clear my throat loudly and she finally glances up. Her bright blue glasses case in one hand. Why are you looking at me like that? Evan, she shifts in her, she shifts in her chair. It's not a big deal. You're getting a ride from your ex. After you just finished angsting about how you can't make things work with your other ex, is not a big deal. I fold my arms for someone so smart my sister can be ridiculously naive. Come on, I spent half my life in a cancer ward, and even I know that's a bad idea. Evan and I are just friends who happened to date a long time ago, like you and Knox. No, it's not like me and Knox. That was mutual. You dumped Evan for Nate, and Evan moped about it for the rest of the senior year. He was, po He wrote poetry. Have you forgotten kilns of despair? Because I have not. And now he's driving two and a half hours on a Thursday to watch Iron Man with you? I don't think it's Iron Man, Broen says doubtfully. Focus, Broen. That's not the point. Evan is carrying a torch, and everybody knows it except you. I brandish the salt shaker at her like it's covered in flames, but I end up spilling it, and then I have to do the whole over-the-shoulder ritual. Rowan takes advantage of my distraction to get to her feet and corral me in one armed hug. She's starting to look worried, but her, her ride is outside, and I can practically see the wheels turning in her head as she calculates the awkwardness quotient of backing out now too high. I have to go. See you at home, she says. I'll be back before dinner. She loops her messenger bag over one shoulder and heads for the door. Make good choices, I call after her. I glance around the cafe as the door shuts behind her. Phoebe is working today, her brow knitted in concentration as she jots down an order from two beanie-wearing hipsters. Ever since Sean Murdoch's infuriating wing zone triumph, people have been acting like Bayview High. Truth or Dare is a hilarious new game. I text one out yesterday from Unknown. The next player has been contacted. TikTok. I know everyone is taking bets on who it is and what they'll choose, given how the first two rounds have gone odds favor for the Dare. It's like everyone at Bayview High has forgotten that Simon was a real person who ended up suffering more than anyone from the way he used to got he used gossip as a weapon. But all you have to do is look at Phoebe's sad eyes and hollow cheeks to know there's nothing funny about any of this. I'm gonna leave it off right there, and I will see you guys in the next video for part two of chapter seven. Bye!